Hi, I'm Murray Deeker. With the rugby and cricket seasons almost overlapping, I was certain that we'd never see another double All Black until this blonde-headed kid from Southland came along and proved me wrong. And what was worse, Jeff Wilson, you turned around then and said, well, actually, basketball's my first love. Is it really? Yeah, it always has been, Murray. Um, you know, I still love it now. I'm a big fan of the NBA, obviously, and you know, I've got um, some real close friends that play National League here. Certainly something that I'd, I'd love to do one day, but at the moment, obviously, I'm pretty devoted to rugby and cricket. Special hero? Yeah, certainly special hero. Uh, Michael Jordan's probably you know, um, the one sportsman I do admire and look up to, and a guy that... You know, hopefully I'll get the opportunity to meet one day um, you know, through my Nike connections. It could be a great opportunity to, you know, to see what he's about and what he does. But you know, obviously the greatest athlete that I think has ever taken a basketball court. Jeff, what is it about him that appeals so much to you? Because my kids at home say the same thing. Everybody your yeah. age is into this bloke. Yeah, I think it's just the, um, the way he plays. He's something sensational and he's just that little bit better than everybody else. And you know, there's superstars in the game of basketball, but he just seems to stand alone as being the best. And you know, he comes to play every night and he plays well every night. So you know, something that I think all sports, sports men and women can look up to and say, I want to play like that. You epitomise so many young New Zealanders, and there's one thing that I haven't ever quite worked out. There's a push in New Zealand to send your son, if he's good at sport, to a single-sex boys' school. You turned your back on Southland Boys High and went to Cargill High, a co-ed. Why? Did you like um, the girls? I never, no, I never really uh, turned my back on Southland Boys. It was a fact my father had gone to um, the Invercargill Technical College, and it was just a, 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 a case that, you know, that's where um, I was going to go. And I think it was good for me because I wasn't really pushed in the sports as much as you probably would have been at a single-sex school. So all I did was get out there and enjoy it, and, you know, it gave me an opportunity that there wasn't a first-11 cricket team. So I got to play senior cricket, you know, when I was, I think, 14 years old. So, you know, I never had to worry about all the other pressures coming from the school. It was just a case of, you know, you can play rugby for the school, but cricket, hey, just go and do what you've got to do. Southland, a wonderful place to get a background in sport. Definitely, you know, um, coming from such a small place like Invercargill, they give you an opportunity that you don't get elsewhere. And, you know, at times I feel a little bit sorry for people who come from up here in Auckland because, you know, the opportunities aren't the same. And down there, they're willing to give you a break and give you a chance. And if they see some young talent, they'll push you along. And, you know, they, they give you, like I say, that opportunity to perform and, and to, to go to the next level. And, Jeff, you're a great opportunist. You grab them with both hands. The first time I heard your name, you were playing for New Zealand Secondary Schools at fullback against Australia, and that was an opportunity, wasn't it? It was. Um, you know, I was very, very fortunate that I had a very, very good team around me, and Jonah was in that side at that time, and he was playing number eight. And, you know, we had a guy by the name of Issa Tolomarko who's playing for Otago now. And, you know, we had a strong, strong team. And, you know, I was fortunate enough on the day we played really, really well. And, you know, there was a few opportunities in that game for me to, to, to do what I do best, which is play. And, you know, things sort of went my way. At the back of your mind, coming from Southland, was the thought there, hey, if I don't grab this opportunity, all these blokes in the big cities, I might never get another one. I mean, I've been very, very fortunate, Murray, that as games have gone along, the right people have been watching and I've played well in the right games and they've said, well, let's give them another chance, another chance. And it sort of rollercoaster ride. It, it kept going and I got another opportunity after another opportunity and, you know, I was lucky enough that I kept playing well and, and I, I keep getting selected. And, you know, I was very, very fortunate when I went to Otago, especially from the rugby side of things, that, that Gordon Hunter took a chance and put me in, you know, after playing not much club football. And, you know, it seemed to pay off because we had quite a good team then. What's your attitude to sport? How do you prepare yourself, Jeff? Um, I think that the key thing for me is um, just to make sure that I'm completely focused on what I'm doing. I don't let anything outside of the game distract me, and I just try and compete as much as I can. And I've got to win. I mean, that's what I try. That's what I play to do. I love to win, and that's part of my makeup. And you know, whatever competition brings me, I'm out there to compete, just give it the best I possibly can, and and make sure that I give myself every chance to, to be successful. Jeff, I've talked to some top golfers, and when I talk to them about competing, they say that they compete against the course, that they're competing themselves against the course. You're in highly competitive team sports, and yet I get the impression that you're setting your own standards. You're not worrying too much about the people that are around you. You're competing against Jeff Wilson. Pretty much, and you know, I've got very, very high standards, and I always expect to improve. And you know, I think a lot of that comes from learning and experience. And you know, I'm starting to get that now. I've played an, an, enough first-class sport in this country to to realise what it's all about. And but you know, it's it's still a learning curve for me, and I'm picking up things as I go along. And I'm starting to understand situations a lot better in different games. But like you say, I've got my own standards that I try and look up to, and you know, I've got my own goals that I set. And you know, overall, though, the only thing that matters is that your team is winning. And, and is being successful and enjoying its sport. And to me, you know, if I can play as well as I can, can, can contribute to that, then I'm, then I'm happy. 
often you're in a situation in a game, both cricket and rugby, where the decisive thing happens, the decisive action is around Jeff Wilson. Do you gear it that way? Um, you know, I think it's just being prepared for that opportunity. Um, you know, knowing mentally that that chance might come your way, and if if you're there and you're the one that has to make the play, then you make the play. And you know, it's nothing that I probably haven't done in, in all my years of sport um, at, at all levels. When that chance comes, it's just do the best you can to make sure it happens. And you know, a lot of that is probably the fear of failure is involved in there, and the belief in yourself, and pretty much just knowing that you can go out there and perform and when the crucial moment comes along that you, you do perform. Everybody wants to be your friend at the moment. I've watched it happen. I've seen them all hanging around you like bees around a honeypot. But I get the idea that you have very few people that you actually go to for advice. Who are they? Very few. You know, I've got a, a very close-knit family that I've got now and, uh, you know, my father is a, a leading uh, influence in my life and someone I really look up to and admire. And, you know, my whole family, my brother and my mother, my uncle, you know, he played first-class cricket and, you know, I look to those people. Certainly I've got a, a, a group at Nike which are really supporting me well, uh, Richard Reid um, certainly helped me out and my lawyer David Hellman has, has really, you know, given me some guidance on where I should be going and, you know, with the help of them and the advice that they give me and you know, I can make uh, educated decisions on where I'm going and what I'm doing. So, you know, like I say, I've got a very strong base there. Um, certainly the people down in South Illinois support me, which is great and, you know, I always look forward to going down there because I know that um, I'm always going to be down to earth because they won't let me be anything else. One of the most important decisions that you've made, I suggest, in your life so far was involving the WRC. It looked to me as a commentator as if WRC had won and that they were going to take over world rugby. And then suddenly you, and then a little bit later Josh Cronfield decided, hey, we don't want to be part of this. How tough was that decision, Jeff? Um, it was a tough decision to make, you know, obviously... Um WRC had made a push in New Zealand rugby and had, had, had put something in front of the players that was, you know, pretty attractive and was going to uh, try and influence rugby. Um, Josh and I made a conscious decision, um, pretty much not together, but we spoke about it and spoke about, you know, where we wanted to go and what we wanted to do. And, you know, we knew already that the Otago, uh, a number of the Otago players were already going, and we felt that, you know, they were our family and that's where we like to play our rugby and you know to turn our back on them and the New Zealand Rugby Union was going to be very very difficult and we just sort of came to the conclusion that you know we wanted to play rugby in New Zealand the New Zealand way and the way that um, our Otago friends were going to do it and you know we made a decision and we stuck by it and you know I'm just uh, happy that I got the right advice around me at that time to help me make that decision. You had a lot of pressure on you at that time too, a lot of pressure from some senior All Blacks to stick with the WRC, correct? Um, not to, no, not really. I mean, everyone had their own opinions, and you know that was fair enough. But they certainly always supported the decision that we made, and you know I, there was no pressure put on us, put on us at all. Um, we've, there's never been any animosity between the players. It's just the fact that uh, we made a decision on our own, so there was no pressure at all. Jeff, I find the figures that are being banded around that top rugby players like yourself are going to get quite frightening. What do you find them to be? Yeah, I think they are a little bit daunting for someone who's never come across something like that before. Um, obviously, professional sports are a new thing for New Zealand, um, to, especially at this level. And we've got to be really, really careful about you know how we manage um, those funds that we do get and the financial backing we've got now. You know, I've actually got very little control over the money I've got, and I'm very happy about that. Um, I certainly live to a, a strict budget, and you know, really, I think all it's going to do is improve the level of, of rugby players in New Zealand. Um, they're going to train harder. They're going to work more in their game. And then um, you're going to see a bit of higher level of rugby. Whether that intensity can be kept up for as long as they're asking to do us, I don't know. Um, you know, I think it's a very, very tough year for the All Blacks this year. And you know, if I'm a part of it, then you know, it's a case of me being prepared for that and just trying to keep healthy and stay fit and keep enjoying my sport. What's professionalism mean to you? Professionalism in sport. I think it means to me is it's just a, a new level of commitment and dedication to the team you're playing for. I think you've got to be dedicated to your, your teammates because they're putting in the hard work. And I think just really making a commitment to the public by saying, well, if people are willing to invest this amount of money in us, then we've got to go out there and give them a performance or a show or make it entertainment. And to me, you know, I think last year we got on that right, that right uh, wavelength. Every, all the players sort of had this positive outlook and say, let's play positive rugby, let's enjoy it, let's get the, the whole country enjoying watching New Zealand play rugby. And I think we did that in the World Cup, we did it in the Bledisloe, and... You know, in the NPC there were some great games of football, so that's what professionalism is going to bring. A new high level um, intensity in rugby, one that, you know, hopefully will improve the players, improve the, the public um, perception of the game. 
recent study of American gridiron players showed that at the end of the career, despite the huge amounts of money that they're making, 50% of them end up broke, 80% of their marriages are stuffed. Why will our rugby players be any different? Well, I think, you know, that's something that uh, the rugby union's really got to look at and the players have got to look at and um, it's all about money management and knowing that you've got, like I say, someone around you who, who can help you out and can manage that um, financial backing for you. And, you know, like I said, I'm very, very lucky that I've got that around me. I think every player's got to find, uh, you know, their niche where they feel most comfortable and, and basically they know that once they finish playing the game, there's something there for them so that they can get on establishing a career and, and look to the future. Um, that's one thing that I'm certainly trying to do is, you know, not limit myself to, you know, just looking um, in the near, the near future, just looking in the distance, saying that this is where I want to be, this is what I want to do. You see, in some ways, I'm a fuddy old daddy. I'm a traditionalist. I think of, to myself about you coming from Invercargill to Dunedin to go to Teachers College, and I think what a wonderful teacher you'd have made. I look at kids all hanging around you and thinking, and, and they idolise you. What's going to happen at the end of your career now? For me, um, you know, I'm looking at a career with Nike at the moment. You know, that's obviously seven or eight years down the track. But in my mind, uh, you know, I'm looking at dealing with um, sports people, um, dealing with athletes who, who want to, you know, see themselves go further in, the, in, in any sport. And you know, I certainly like dealing with kids still, and I'd still like to be a sports ambassador. I um, mean, you know, I'm very fortunate the Hillary Commission's given me the opportunity last year, and hopefully I can do that again this year, just to pretty much get out there and support. You know, people are looking in a positive mode and if it means that I can have some sort of influence or I can help someone, then that's the role I want to play.